Hi there, mystical magpies. Um, this is going to be a bit of a different video to usual. I'm excited to see how this goes. I don't know if it's going to be like interesting or if it might drag a little bit. I'm not really sure what's going to happen during the course of it. Although knowing me, there will be some timestamps down below. So you'll be able to navigate your way through whatever I end up doing. But basically, I'm off work for a few days and I thought I would take you with me for some of my adventures, um, just being off duty, focusing on self-care, not really doing much work, intentionally decompressing, relaxing. I felt like I needed that. I actually booked this time off to go to Wales to go on a pilgrimage that's very specific to one of my favourite poets, my favourite poet of all goddamn time, Dylan Thomas. Um, I wanted to go to his birthplace, the first place he worked, the place he grew up and the place he's buried. And I will be doing that. I've got it all planned out and I'm really excited about it. But I felt like now was the wrong time for a few reasons. First of all, the heat. I really didn't want to take a train to Swansea in the heat. Um, I felt actually instinctively when I really thought about it that it's probably not actually a summer trip. It's more of an autumn trip, I think, autumn, winter. Um, and I think that would be much more the vibe. I think that would strongly pass the seasonal vibe check, to be honest. And also, um, I don't think I've got the energy to really make the pilgrimage everything that I would like it to be and everything that I've been envisioning it being. I just don't think I've got the bandwidth emotionally and mentally to do it. So I decided to just have the time at home instead. And so far, so good. I've been off since Monday. It's now Wednesday, the 24th of August, as I'm beginning to film. And uh, Monday was very, very chill because I had an extremely packed weekend. I went to a wedding. I went to a gig. I hung out with my best friend's family that I haven't seen for ages. I hung out with some London friends. So there was just a lot going on at the weekend. So Monday, I didn't do much of anything. I just slept a lot, read a little bit of my book, went to my friends and they and he made me a beautiful stir fry for dinner. Very lucky me. Um, so that was basically it. I really just don't think there was anything worth filming on Monday. And I hadn't actually figured out that I was going to film yet. Yesterday was lovely though. Yesterday was where I got the idea that I actually wanted to film. It's quite early in the morning as I'm filming this and I've just, uh, I've just done some ritual, some meditation. Um, and that was really lovely for today. Yesterday, what did I do? I went to the gym, which was great because I hadn't been to the gym since early last week. Um, like I said, the weekend was pretty packed out, so I didn't really have an opportunity. So yeah, I went to the gym yesterday. Um, I went to the coffee shop and did some journaling. And there is no doubt that that is going to be part of what I will be doing the next few days. So I'll definitely be taking you coffee shop journaling. Um, I uh, wrote out some notes for some videos that I wanted to do, bashed out a few poems, which is great. And I uploaded a couple of them so far onto my Instagram. You can always check out my poetry Instagram below if you're interested in my poetry, if you are if you hobnob in that world, darling, or you're just curious. Um, I write, uh, I don't know, weird, surrealistic poetry based around sex, death, violence and religion and love. Um, <laughs> and identity. I write a little bit about identity as well. Um, so yeah, I've had a really nice chill time so far. Had some good food. Um, definitely feels weird not seeing any clients. Um, I mean, I've had a couple of days off in a row or three days off in a row, but it's always to do things. I don't actually usually have time this many days, you know, like I've got until Friday evening. So like I said, it's Wednesday morning early at the time of filming this. Um, I've got till Friday evening and I've decided to work the Friday evening because it's a really good time for my clients uh, on the other side of the US to get me. Um, I, so I'm doing a late shift on Friday evening. So I'll probably stop filming around then. So I'll take you with my esca on my escapades until then, my self-care escapades. Um, yeah, I don't usually have time off just to sit around for this long and just do whatever the fuck I feel like, really. Um, I am going to make some videos, but it's just going to be things like unboxing the Transient Light Tarot, which I'm really excited about. Hay House sent me a PR copy and I'm absolutely thrilled. So 
Um, I've already done a little bit of looking into that. Of course, I looked into it before I accepted the deck. I always look at the deck and see, do I want this? Will it go well in my collection? Do I want to unbox it before I say yes to it? But I was just doing a little bit more research on it last night and this morning. Uh, so I'm really excited to unbox that. And I'll probably film a housework ramble as well, because tidying is definitely going to be part of what I need to do for the next few days. I've got lots of organising that I want to do. I've pulled a load of things out in my living room, art materials, clothes that I'm decluttering, books that I'm decluttering, figuring out where things are going to live and if I'm going to keep things or not. So um, yeah, I am going to film a couple of videos, but mostly it's just me just hanging out, just doing whatever I feel like. So I decided to have pretty much no plans apart from the tidying aspect. Um, like if I end up not wanting to film videos, I just won't film them. Um, if I plan to have a long bath and then I don't want to an hour later, I'm just not going to. Um, <laughs> I have no plan because I tend to find that when I have relaxing, high quality solitude is what I like to think of it as. Sometimes I do have a very rigorous plan and if I'm not feeling great, if I'm depressed or in this case if I'm very bereaved and I'm just trying to be super gentle with myself, um, I can end up feeling stressed out with myself that I did not adhere to the plan. That's the Virgo moon coming through. Okay, the Sagittarius sun is like, just relax, go with it, do what you need to do. But the Virgo moon is like, we had a very specific list and you didn't bloody carry it out. What does this mean about you as a person? <laughs> This is my journal, by the way, guys. Um, it's a very beautiful book my mum got for me quite a while ago. Um, I got a shitload of water on it when I had a little leak in my tent at Download Festival. Uh, I didn't think it was actually going to survive, to be honest. Look at it. It's all rickety now. It was a very solid, sturdy book, and now it's a little waterlogged. But it's getting dry, you know, little by little. I've already done, as I said, some coffee shop journaling, and I definitely will be doing more of that. I think it's really good for the soul. But like I said, if I change my mind, I change my mind. Fuck it. <laughs> um, okay, so spend some time with me. I would love you to. Um, we'll see what I get up to. I'm curious about what I get up to. Who knows? Who knows what I'm going to do? <laughs> Do you think I've got enough sunglasses on hand? Be honest. I know there's only a few there. So let me know if you think I need a few more. <laughs> My sarcasm there. I've got more as well. They're just the ones I've got, you know, for just if I randomly need a pair when I go out. I just love shades. I love collecting different shades. I love these ones. Resting witch face. <laughs> Wow, I had a very beautiful time walking on the beach and walking around town, looking through the shop windows and just exploring, getting inspired and stuff. That was really beautiful. I went round to my friend's house um, with my shopping and actually fell asleep, had a little nap on their couch. Um, and when I woke up, they've made me some dinner. So I actually didn't end up having to feed myself very much. So I just put all that food in the fridge. 
Now um, I've just gone through a big pile of my washing, so um, it's all clean, the stuff that I was going through. But it actually ended up in a big pile on the floor because I was um, sort of racing around at the weekend trying to find stuff to wear for the wedding and to pack for the weekend. So I ended up with a massive pile of clean clothes all over the floor and the couch. So I ended up just going through exploring bits and pieces while I went through my YouTube watch later list, which was packed with loads of goodies from my favourite political commentary channels and um, fashion commentary channels and stuff like that. A few witchy bits and pieces as well. So really um really good for my brain space i just took a lot from uh the videos and just kind of had a relaxing um rummage through the clothes folded things up put things into categories that kind of thing and just really enjoyed doing that i have a really good relationship with my clothing and i actually really love remembering what i have and kind of rotating things and just exploring and trying on i'm definitely going to do a little bit more trying on in my time off as well that's one of the things that i wanted to wanted to do um, i put some dresses aside that i'm going to try on later in the video and just see what i think of them so we'll have a little dress up then um, and now i'm going to have a little sleep and see what kind of self-care adventures i can get up to on thursday <sighs> well good morning <laughs> um so a wonderful friend of mine one of my closest friends in the world just sent me a beautiful message um i gave her a reading last weekend uh weekend before last now and uh we recorded it because we'd been up all night and i wanted to make sure she had a copy so she could listen back over and she just listened back over it and gave me her impressions and it was really, really, really inspiring um, the way that, that she took the messages from Spirit and what she's doing with them and everything. And it was just incredible. She's a witch also, and a lot of messages about that came up. She's also very creative. I'll actually leave her Instagram down below. Um, she has a, an amazing headdress business called Sticky Pins. If you want to feel like a total goddess witch thing, I highly recommend buying one of her headdresses. They are incredible. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I just listened to her message. It was incredible. So I now feel really inspired to go back over a reading that I purchased from the wonderful Tom Benjamin and um, listening to it again and writing some notes and stuff like that. I think I'm in a way better place to absorb the messages now. It's a self-care reading. At the time that I bought it, I didn't feel like my self-care was that good. And I wanted to really invest and like dig into what I could be doing differently um, and why organisation was not as great as it could have been um, and why, you know, why certain blocks were occurring. So I'm going to make myself a cup of tea, um, get some very cold water because it's incredibly humid in England today. <laughs> the armpit hair, rocking the armpit hair there. Um, and yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go over those messages and see how I'm feeling about them and make some notes. So that is a really, really good direction for the morning. Um, one of my other really close friends sent me a breakdown of a dream that he had last night in which he was in which he was a rabbi, then a drug dealer, then a ghost, which is actually a really good archetypal breakdown of his personality, actually, in three parts. Um, and that was fascinating. I love hearing people's fucking dreams. Oh my God, it's so interesting. Um, I love it when clients or loved ones like tell me their dreams. So just fascinating and what a privilege to, to hear that um, and be able to dig into it with them. So that's really intriguing. I had some really wild dreams last night. Hopefully they'll piece themselves together in a moment. Um, sometimes it takes me a while. I remember them the split second after I wake up then they dissipate, then they come back together again. Sometimes I remember them straight away, but in this case, I know that I was running around on the astral for a long time doing lots of crazy shit. So uh, if I remember my dream, I will also record that or think on it a bit because I've been having some wild, wild dreams lately. My unconscious has been really shaken in its water of recent. Um, and so, yeah, that's, I'm just really inspired upon waking which is great. I love that. So we have the Ace of Flames, the Four of Feathers, and the Five of Flames here. This is the Mother of Flames, the Nine of Cups, and the Son of Feathers.
wow. <laughs> um, wow, that was just a really great note-taking session. Um, I knew that the messages from the reading didn't go in the first time I checked it out and I knew that they I knew that I wasn't really paying like the full attention that I wanted to pay. Um, sometimes that happens with me. I don't actually buy readings that often and when I do I usually buy them in two or three. Three tends to be my magic number. Um, it's usually like I have different things that I want to uh, get readings on and I usually get them from different readers and Tom has a great self-care spread on Etsy. I will leave the link to the self-care spread down below and also um, like that reading option and also the Etsy in general for Tom Benjamin. Definitely recommend a reading with Tom. Um, it was, it was, it's deep, It's it was funny, it was like, um, full of metaphors, which I love. Like I love, I love the use of metaphor and analogy in readings because that's very much how I do things as well, and I think that's really helpful. Um, it was, it's just, I'm really, my mind's kind of blown. I want to talk about a few things. Um, so yeah, anyway, I was going to say um, I don't buy readings often, but when I do, I usually buy them in two, a uh, group of two or three, and then when they come through, I think. I, I feel overwhelmed by having all of this nurturing and this these ideas to play with and stuff. So I don't actually straight away get into the meat and potatoes of it. I tend to wait a while. Um, so yeah, this was the perfect time. Um, motorbike there. So a few of the things that I was thinking about that I wrote down and that Tom spoke about in the reading, there's like four pages of notes here, guys. Um, yeah, so it was so interesting because a lot of what I went to this reading for was an understanding of how I could get out of the funk that I'm in with my environment, with like tidying and cleaning and organizing and decluttering and having a connection to my physical space and why that, why I was struggling with that and how I could like get through that. And the reading told me exactly what I need to know, which is like, fuck the laundry right now. Like there's a forest fire. Your job is, is the, caretaker of the fire and the manager of the fire and the acknowledgement that the forest is burning is your self-care um that's where it is uh and and what was really interesting that came through was um if i just let the things that i wish i could do sit there like laundry like washing up whatever it might be um, you know, like hoovering the fucking stairs or whatever. If I let those things sit there, by letting myself leave that stuff, I can come to it with curiosity when the time is actually right for me to have the experience of doing that and connecting with my space, rather than forcing the act uh, when I'm in the middle of overwhelm. I don't get to gauge then when my overwhelm is lessened because I'm too busy trying to push through it. And I also uh, picked up so much about how pouring water on the flames of grief is not necessarily self-caring and that there is no true way to self-lovingly perform the grief uh, in a in a kind of shallow or disconnected way while I'm doing these things that like need to be done, strong inverted commas there. Um, yeah, so I just, I needed to, I needed someone else to say and I needed spirit to say that the flames of grief that I am tending and fighting and coming to terms with are so much more important than cleaning my fucking toilet. And I just have to let go and I have to just be okay with that. Um, very, very like profound for me. Um, yeah, uh, there was a bit in the reading where uh, about the act of healing and how it's not a passive act. And sometimes I think I need to be reminded of that. You know, healing is draining. Um, the way Tom put it is it costs you emotionally. And I think I needed to bring my attention and my readiness to that, um, especially today. Um, and I hope that Tom won't mind me mentioning this because uh, I know like sometimes... Um, well, of course, like you're when you give a reading to someone, it's a private thing and you shouldn't really share, you know, everything about it or indeed re-upload it or whatever. But I just wanted to say that one actual thing that Tom said that I will quote verbatim is emotional intelligence has no place here. 
um, as in like the moderation of the emotion and the emotionally intelligent way to handle my grief and my rage and my shock and my, you know, sense of injustice, like that really doesn't, that really doesn't have to play into it. And it's probably better if I don't try to approach everything with this kind of moderating, cooling energy of like, how should I emotionally intelligently react to this? But, pff, that that that's just uh, by the by right now and i think i needed that as well you know um i want to be curious about where this fire is taking me um and i think i that insistence on stabilities um and acts that signify that things are in control um are stopping me from actually kind of acknowledging the intensity of the moment um, somewhat at times. I think what came from the reading for me was that destruction can be self-sustaining in a way. The destruction of order, the destruction of routine, um, the, the destruction that is caused by grief and actually, and actually saying, yes, things have been fucking destroyed by this. Yes, this is destruction in action. Accepting that can be very self-sustaining and I think acknowledging that I will move to a quiet calmness again but not now was one of the the most important things that came from the reading for me um it's uh really interesting too one more thing I will say is it was a 12 card reading and there were no majors in it now for any of you who had a reading from me you will know most probably that I'm very interested in what is omitted as well as what is there um and by that, I mean, like, if we do a six or seven card reading or an eight card reading and there is nothing from the suit of pentacles or there is nothing from the suit of wands, I will mention the emission of fire, the the lack of earth or whatever and what that means. And to have no majors in a 12 card reading, I know as a full time reader myself is quite rare. And I was I was, um, you know, so I was interested straight away. I was like, oh oh, there's no majors in this whole reading. Um, and actually Tom mentioned at the end, and I thought put a really great um, sort of perspective on why that is. It's because at the moment, everything is day by day by day. It's the daily sort of grind of grief. And, you know, spirit to me in a reading, the major arcana is so much to do with like a big moment, a an illuminating time, a time of shift, a, a time of transmutation, um, a significant time, um, and a t a, sometimes a time of light, you know, uh, for better or worse. And this is not that. My experience right now is not that. My experience is very like hour to hour to hour and making those hours thread together. Um, and so I thought that was a perfect take on why there were no majors and it really illuminated me. I've got to say, um, as a professional reader, it is so nice and so nurturing to have a few days in a row where I'm not giving any readings. I haven't touched a deck um, and to, to ingest a reading myself for me um, that was given to me by someone else. It's given me so much to chew on. It's made me feel really healthy. And also it's helped me as a reader. If you are a reader, get a reading. Um, it's just so helpful. Um, and yeah, I, I must recommend Tom. That was great. That was really, really good. I'm so happy I did this. I am now going to write Etsy feedback because I did not do that when I first received the reading. Because as I said, I wasn't quite in the mindset um, to be able to take everything in. But I will go do that now. Um, wow, that was awesome. That was really really good, really helpful. So the next thing I thought I might do was um, some affirmations in my affirmation book. And I, I'm going to take you with me on that journey. But um, I also had some very good news yesterday that has led to me having to do just a very small bit of something work oriented. I will explain a bit later in this video, maybe next in the video. I don't know, because there is no plan, as I said at the beginning, for what is happening uh, with this video or with the next bit of time in my life. So, um, so, but I'll let you know as and when in this video what the news is, but it is terribly exciting, darling. But it has led to me just having to do something for my publishing company quickly, and then I will come back to me. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm doing the affirmations next or what, what time is it? Oh, I still have some time, I think. Um, I'm making my affirmations book much more arty. 
so um like i'm by arty i mean more visual um i used to just write the affirmations in there and leave it at that you know maybe do some fancy bullet points whereas now i'm trying to work much more with imagery as well because i think the affirmations go in so much more when i give them the devotion and the time and i make them look beautiful and it makes me go back to them more so I will need an hour or so to do the affirmations I have in mind. So I'll speak to my glamorous assistant and see what the timeline is for him. And I'll see what's what. Um, I'd also love to pray the rosary at some point today. I think that the rosary is calling me, darling. So, yeah. Um, but I just wanted to share a few perceptions uh, that I had while I was watching the reading again. Okay, it's time to work on my affirmations book now, darlings. I love writing affirmations. And I have increasingly enjoyed the more visual aspect of my affirmations book. I used to just sort of like scribble the affirmations out and there wasn't any art to accompany them. Uh, but I've found that it actually really helps me to connect more with the words if I put imagery to things and work with colour and collage and stuff. I like to sit and think about what kinds of themes or issues are coming up for me at the time. And I go with that to devise the affirmations. Um, sometimes I already have some pretty great statements of power swirling around in my head, whereas sometimes it's a bit more of a brainstorm and I might start a little bit blank and then kind of come around to things that I want to write. I do use this book that you're looking at now over and over again. I go back through the affirmations I've already written, you know, and I use them. Um, but sometimes it's time for some new affirmations like today. So while I'm creating the pages, I'm not necessarily in a deeply meditative state or anything. In fact, I was actually watching a documentary about cults uh, when I made these pages. But it's after I finish the affirmations, then I do get into sort of like a quiet, peaceful state. And I speak the words aloud. Sometimes I speak them into a mirror. Sometimes I repeat them. And that's where things really come together. And I feel the positive effects going through my body and my psyche. And I really kind of take on what the words mean. I also find the creation process obviously calming and joyful in and of itself. So by the time I get to the point that I've written the affirmations, um, I'm already in sort of a, a better place, you know. If you would like to check out these affirmations pages and see more of this material from me, I do offer them over on Patreon. The link is down below. After wrapping up this process, I made myself this gorgeous, nutritious bean salad with marinated tofu, which is definitely the kind of dish that I appreciate before hitting the gym if I'm going to work out in the evening because it's slow release energy and it's not super heavy. Very tasty. I think we can only spend so long sitting in a fog of cigar smoke discussing borders and partition plans like the English bastards who started this whole thing in the first place. Instead, I think a much more useful and simple approach would just be to listen to Palestinians. In Sudan, the government chose to abstain from condemning Putin, but the people who are in the process of actively revolting have shown some inclination towards supporting Ukraine. A Sudanese delegation to Russia entered the country on the 23rd of February, a day before the invasion, and was headed by Hamedi. If the UK healthcare market was to be opened up to the private sector, it would be a huge money maker. You know, the, if you look um, across the pond, Big Pharma is one of the most profitable industries there are. You know, it has profit margins of like 70%. Um, percent. So I think for the, the Tory party and their sort of class mates, essentially, um, the NHS is basically like this massive cock block to what could <laughs> be, you know, this massive market for for. Profit extraction. Okay, it's 9 p.m. on Thursday now. I'm gonna go to the gym, gonna sweat a little bit, gonna do some weights, gonna do some cardio, gonna try and make it count. Um, yeah, this is one of my favorite parts of my self care routine. I absolutely love the gym. I do try to work out at home, but I'll be honest with you, I'm one of those people for whom it doesn't go as well as it does when I go to the gym. Um, I know that it's an expense. I have thought once or twice in the past about getting rid of it, but I've become more and more and more in love with it as I go along. And my gym is actually not that expensive compared to a lot of other gyms. It's like just the ordinary, you know, council run gym, but it's pretty good. It's a nice atmosphere. Um, it has a spa and sauna and all that jazz as well. So you can have, you know, you can have the steam room and sauna after a session if you want to, or just to relax. So, um, I think it's worth it and like I said really one of the one of the best 
self-care expenses um I've been going since 2017 on and off but I've only really been serious about it for the last couple of years I would say started to get more serious about it in 2019 but then obviously 2020 was a total gym flop so I would say 2022 has been my second like full I'm a regular gym goer type of year and it's just gotten more and more of a love affair so I'm excited to go and yeah, smash the last hour before it closes. It closes at 10 p.m. I absolutely love my gym at night because it's dead. <laughs> so I do get things pretty much to myself. So I went to the weight section first. Um, I did some weighted squats, weighted lunges, bicep curls, Arnold presses, that kind of thing. I really love the free weight section way more than I used to. I just get so much joy out of doing free weights. It's very meditative. It's really embodying. I can really focus. I also get quite a bit of emotion out when I'm doing weights. So that's a really interesting thing about it. And even with a very short and sweet session um, like today where I got less than an hour in, I categorically always feel that it's worth it. And I always feel happy that I spent time in the gym. You know, I never regret it. It's a mood boost. It clears my mind. It helps me feel embodied. I smashed the cross trainer for 25 minutes after I did my weights and then wandered home. Okay, my loves, we are at my mother Mary altar now in the living room. And it's time for me to pray the rosary. I'm going to pray a full set of mysteries today. Um, later on in Self Love September, I'm going to share with you how I actually pray the rosary. It is a completely customised way of doing it, one that I devised on my own. And um, I've been very cagey about speaking about how I do it and what is involved in everything. Um, haven't shared it so far, but I know that an increasing number of witches who are interested in the very potent tool of the rosary would be interested in knowing how I devised it and stuff. So I'm definitely going to share you uh, share that with you this month. It is definitely a very self-loving way of doing it. And it's a way that, you know, really focuses on um, gratitude, uh, emotional healing, wellness, self-care and kind of like bringing your energy and intention back to yourself, your, you know, the next action that you need to take and how you feel and how to be strong in the world. So I think it's very relevant to the themes of Self Love September. So I'll definitely give you a full breakdown at another time. Um, but for now, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to pray some mysteries, baby. Let's do this. I think today I'm going to use my customised rosary. So these are rosary beads that I bought on my pilgrimage to Walsingham. I will leave a link down below if you want to see my pilgrimage. I don't remember if I said that earlier in this vlog. Um, but I actually took the cross off of this rosary and I replaced it with my little medal from Walsingham. Um, I wonder if I can get it to focus. Can I get it to focus? I don't know. Apparently it's not doing so. I think it's because I don't have much light in here. Um, I just took a photograph of it and that worked okay, but I can't seem to make it focus now anyway. But yeah, this is, um, this is, uh, Mary appearing to, um, Rochelle Dish de Favage and, uh, that was at Walsingham and that's why the shrine was built. So I decided to take the cross off and you can do that. I think it's actually really good to replace the cross with other things and it definitely makes people feel in a lot of senses more comfortable to work with the rosary even if they're going to do it in quite a traditional way if they are not catholic or they don't work with jc sometimes that can be um you know a useful way of getting into the rosary if it feels like a little bit of a block in that regard hail holy queen mother of mercy our life our sweetness and our hope to you do we cry poor banished children of eve to you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show us unto the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our deaths. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Okay, honey bunnies, it is now Friday. I've had a lovely sleep. Um, I woke up slowly, went down to the coffee shop, did some journaling. I didn't film in the coffee shop today because I had a couple really close to me. Um, I'm not one of those people that's super comfortable vlogging in public if there are people really near me and they're kind of glancing over at me or 
I feel like I'm basically sat on a table with them because it's kind of a cramped, quaint French cafe situation. Um, and I just, I felt kind of uncomfortable getting my tripod out and like sort of directing it towards my journal or whatever. So I didn't actually end up filming that, uh, but I feel very relaxed as a result of it. It's actually one of those cafes. Um, you can see it in the video that I made uh, about writing affirmations. Actually, I'll leave that down below. So especially if you enjoyed my part in this vlog about affirmations, you can watch me um, speak some affirmations and you know talk about that process a bit more. Um, but yeah, you can see the cafe that I went to today in that video. And I love it. It is one of my favorite cafes uh, in the area. So I really do feel better for having gone there. So what you're looking at now, obviously, is the Transient Light Tarot. So I did end up unboxing the Transient Light Tarot this morning when I got back from the coffee shop. And you will be able to see the unboxing of that some point soon. Really, really love this deck. So I thought before I end this vlog, I'll just show you some of the cards. Um, yeah, I really just, I just feel so blessed that this deck is in my possession. I wasn't expecting to have such an emotive response to it as I did. Um, I actually did cry when I unboxed this. Um, one of the cards in particular just had a massive deep effect on me. And I just really appreciate the creative decisions that Ari Weisner has made um, with this deck. So I definitely think it's thought provoking. Um, it's something that I haven't got anything like it in my collection. And I'm just really pleased that I had an opportunity to unbox and talk about my impressions and stuff. So, yeah, that's really cool. Um, oh, I forgot as well that I think at the beginning... No, not at the beginning of this vlog. I think it was while I was doing my... Just before I, I uh, looked at my reading from Tom Benjamin. I'm pretty sure that I did say that I've got some good news um, that I need to deliver to you guys. And actually, I forgot all about that with all of the excitement of yesterday with my affirmations time and my gym time and everything. So I guess I will just announce it now. Um, I have sold the book rights for Rebel Witch um, for the Scandinavian market, and they are putting together the Finnish version of Rebel Witch. And I'm absolutely fucking ecstatic about that. How unbelievably exciting. What a wonderful, wonderful piece of news. Um, honestly, Rebel Witch being published in French and published in German and now being published in Finnish, and I think some of the other Scandi languages as well, but I don't know. Um, but I think that's the situation. I'm waiting for Watkins to get back to me. That's my publisher. Um, yeah, so having the, having the book published in other languages is actually a tiny shard of diamond in a year of shit for me, honestly. It's really made me so happy. And I, I did get quite teary when I found out this news via email because um, it is the kind of thing that I would be very excited to tell my brother. Um, and I know I can tell my brother in my own way, but uh, it's not the same, you know. So I did get very emotional um, feeling that loss at that time and thinking about all the beautiful potential and the excitement and the plans that my brother had for his life. Um, so it was hard. I'm not going to say it was completely easy news, but it is really great news. I'm very excited. I'm excited that Rebel Witch is making it into more languages. I'm a huge respecter and lover of, of linguistics and language and, you know, just the excitement of learning new words in different languages. And so for me, seeing Rebel Witch in another language, but especially in Finnish, how exciting, um, is really a joy. It really is a joy. And French and German, oh my God. Like, I'm just so, I'm just, I feel so lucky and I feel... So excited about that. So I want to thank everybody who who made um, Rebel Witch and the sort of floating of Rebel Witch into other markets uh, a possibility and, and showed interest in the book and has purchased the book. Um, and if you haven't done so and you want to purchase Rebel Witch, I will leave all the details on how you can do that down below. Thank you so much for coming with me um, on this very personal vlog. Um, yeah, exciting. It was awesome. I really had a good time. I can't wait to show you the unboxing of this deck, the Transient Light Tarot. And yeah, much love and happy self-love September. Blessed be.